Heather here. Thanks for joining me for another live show. I can see you're already online now. We're talking all about rebounds. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I want to welcome you. This is where I answer your questions in kind of an AMA, but we have a topic and today it's rebounds. Thank you, Gwyneth, for being with me and Bamareg, I'm answering your question. And by the way, I had so many video requests on rebounds. What is up with that? Um, I will also be answering Sherry's question on rebound and V. There are a multitude of directions for rebounds. Most of us think of a rebound simply as we, we learn the golden rule. Oh, if somebody has just gotten out of a relationship or they've just gotten divorced, don't be the first one to date them, right? So we learn that rule. But rebounds can be played out in dozens of different ways. You can have ended a relationship, really, really, really think you're done. And, you know, you processed it and you meet somebody, but it kicks up something that you didn't expect inside yourself. And you realize you're not ready for a relationship or you tried to make it them and you still have lingering feelings for your ex. And so, Bam Rig, you ask why people do it. I promise you, people, unless they are really sick and narcissistic, there are very few people that rub their hands together and go, oh, man, I'm just going to go out and make as many hearts break as possible. Most people are just ignorant. Um, somebody, I was at Core Club the other night and somebody, oh, my friend Joan I said, you know, modern dating nowadays is like letting everybody just get in a car and drive without any training whatsoever. And they're having accidents and hitting each other. And she's absolutely right. So um, I thank you everyone who's come here. Gwyneth Sharp, my wonderful moderator, B will be joining us later. And I have some new mods coming on just so that you two ladies have a break. Um, Richard, uh, someone I was seeing dating said they needed space and I haven't had any contact with them in a while. How do I contact them without coming across as needy and turning them off? Richard, we just did an episode on um, space, time and space. And maybe it was your question that I answered. I can't remember, but we just I just did a video on that time when they say time and space because it strikes fear into our hearts. Um, I ask for clarification. You will never feel weak and needy if your true primary goal is that you need information, period. You feel weak and needy if you're like, like, am I okay? Do you want me? But if it's just haven't heard from you, just want to know, you want to keep seeing each other, what's the deal here? Just, you know, just a heads up. Let me know how do you feel. If you'd like to get together again, please respond to this text. If not, you don't have to, and then I'll just move on my way. I mean, it's just, it's so simple. And we put some way too much into it. So let me stay on the topic of uh, rebounds. It's an epidemic. <laughs> so all of you with general questions, I will come back to them. All right. I really want to talk about rebounds. Sarah from Germany. Hello. Hi, Susan. I'm so happy to be here, Nicholas. Hi, Terry. You haven't been able to catch the live show for a while. Victoria. Okay. So listen. Rebounds, I've got some good stories to tell you about rebounds, and I have some cautionary tales. So I want you all to understand that there are as many different variations of what can happen in a rebound as there are different outcomes. Hello, all my German friends. Listen, um, all of you in Germany, keep a heads up because I'll be in Munich on May 21st. We will be having a sign-up sheet so that I can organize something. Um, if you haven't yet, go to susanwinter.net when we're off this show, or if you can access it while you're watching this, go to my homepage where it says newsletter, sign up so I have contact with you. That way I'll know, I can announce things in newsletters that you're not just going to see here. Oh, look at all these fabulous people, more people in Germany, JJ, Julie, hi, Richard. Okay, the Netherlands, hi, Alexandra, El Paso, Texas, Cameron. Okay, everybody else. Oh my goodness, Vanessa from Argentina. Hi, Luisa from the Philippines. India, Sarah, Germany. Boy, lots of Germans here. Now listen, I'm going to start with a positive scenario. And Bam Rig, I want you to hear this too, okay? I have a positive story for you about a rebound. I have a colleague 
and I met her, oh golly, seven or eight years ago and she was just starting. She's very big now. I'm not saying any names because you might even know who she is. She had a vicious and a horrible divorce with her husband and had a child. And the husband just wanted to screw her over. Oh, by the way, she said, never marry a divorce attorney. Her husband was a divorce attorney. So what he did was in order to get full custody of the child, just to irritate her because he was so abusive, she couldn't love him anymore. And when she no longer loved him, instead of trying to be a better guy, he decided to punish her. So he did it by discrediting her in her field. She's in a field where she's helping people, right? Reputation is everything. He did everything to discredit her. He put things online. He spread rumors. Long story short, got the custody of the kid. She was broken and a mess. And in her sobbing and in her licking her wounds and digging into her spiritual journey, into town comes this beautiful man, Michelle. Meets her, loves her up one side and down another, brings her back to life, amazing lover, kind of like the kiss that awakened the princess, right? And as seemingly like magnificently as he just dropped from the heavens, came to her town, then one day he was just gone. But he had given her so much life force because she felt again beautiful and she felt desired and she could see that it was just one person that was horrible to her for his own reasons and that she was lovable. And this guy brought her back to life and she told me this story and she said, I wish everybody had their own Michelle. Now the reason I say that is Michelle was a rebound. He was temporary. So rebounds are, are band-aids. Maybe they're a band-aid that you've chosen to get out of a tricky situation. You want to get over a heartache. Maybe somebody's choosing you and you're their first attempt to have a relationship again. But rebounds don't have to be harmful. They don't have to be hurtful. It depends upon the, per the people playing and it depends upon their intention. I just want to thank you. Cody's Inspiration 199. Cody, thank you very much. And if you have a question for that contribution, I appreciate it so much. If not, we'll just be looking and pay attention here. Um, now, I want to read something. Here's another version of this. This is, um, I had a very long series of viewer requests from Sherry. She's got an entirely different situation. Her ex is on the rebound with somebody else and still wanting to keep in contact with her because it's really more of a timeout. So Richard, maybe you'll relate to this. It's kind of like it was a breakup, but it feels more like they wanted space to try other people. She's fully committed. So she writes to me, my question is my ex broke up with me in a very traumatic and deceitful way. After much contemplation, I realized his fear and pain in the situation he's in with his rebound and his love for me. We have gone no contact in order to heal, but my desire is not to sever our connection, but to recreate it in another form if possible. Then she write, and I responded to her that I was doing this show. And then she wrote a second note to me. She said, should I continue with texting to maintain a connection while he is in his rebound? First of all, when I stop there, I'd say no. Whatever's got to play out, if your partner's in a rebound, if somebody you love is in a rebound or they're in a timeout where they're playing around with somebody else, you let them go. You let them go because they have to go and do their due diligence, their exploration, and you're torturing yourself by staying in contact. You've got to do the best you can to move forward. Then she writes, should I try to morph our past patterns into another type of relationship, which I am all for, but not sure what or how? Yes, you should. I never ask him about his relationship, very good, and he never offers. I'm trying to date, but I'm still not over our relationship, so it's a half effort. So honestly, Sherry, if you dated anybody, they'd be your rebound. I need a bit more time to heal. 
you do. So in your particular case, you want your partner back who is in a rebound with somebody else. I would say that you're using the word rebound. You've actually broken up and he's in a new relationship. The fact that he's confused and wants you is really selfish on his part. When he's with her, he wants you. When he's with you, he wants to date other people. I mean, what is that? Okay, that's why I say you pull away while they do their exploration. Sometimes the best thing to do with a new partner, has anybody ever been in this situation where you've got a new partner and suddenly they want to go do something? I mean, you're really not, you just started seeing each other. So things aren't really hammered out. And suddenly they want to, I don't know, go someplace or do something without you or see some friends. And it's just like, uh, it's a little weird because you know there's other stuff going on there and you're thinking, all right, what do I do? You know, I knew I couldn't fight this, certainly in certain cases, in certain points of my life. And I thought, okay, best thing for you to do is go. If I hold you back, whatever you want to run toward is going to look so much more exciting and tempting. But if I say, go, go, sure, fine. Somehow my confidence being so cool, yeah, you go, you go do that. Of course, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> You're not really going to get the same Susan you had before. You got to go explore that. You go explore that. And chances are, because you've had permission to do it, it takes away all the fun. And because I couldn't care less about that, because they aren't a threat, go ahead. Try to replicate me in a discotheque tonight. You might get sex if that's what you choose to do. You may find I'm not here the next day. But you know what? You're not going to find me. So if you have that attitude, things go a lot better. So if anybody is still involved with their ex and the ex is using the word rebound, but they're actually in a new relationship, I suggest you let them go. Not only that, let them go. Oh, I'd say go. Push, give them a little push. Yes, go. I think that's a brilliant idea. I think we should take a time out because only when you have that separation and you really grow and go in your own way, only then will you be able to come back together in a newly formed relationship? Okay, let's see. Oh, hi from South Africa. You're helping me overcome some of the most difficult internal battles, Susan. You're amazing. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate that. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness, you people are writing so much here. All right, Cody, I guess we've got nothing else from you. Let's see. I'm going to try to stand rebounds, everybody. Oh, Cody, wow. you're. Cody's inspiration. Wow, you're telling my story. I can't believe this. Yeah, it's like a collective thought. It's really inspirational. Thank you. I do need this healing in my life. My ex came back after, I think, I think they say choosing some, my ex came back after Cody. Cody, Cody has more, probably after something the ex came back. Okay. All right. So do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, we use the best possible words that we have for these very strange <laughs> interactions that we're having with our partners nowadays in modern dating. So I'm continuing today. Again, if you're just tuning in now, Susan Winter, best-selling author, relationship expert. I'm continuing to talk about rebounds. There are good rebounds. There are productive rebounds. There are healing rebounds. There are a waste of time rebounds. There are rebounds that make you realize, oh my gosh, I'm not over my ex or I don't even know what I want when I'm dating. The next is from V. And can you believe I set this title two weeks ago because of Bamareg asked for it and all these video requests. Oh, and if you don't know how to do it, susanwinter.net, the last page says contact, go all the way to the bottom and there is a box that says video request, okay? V writes, Hi, Susan. I really love your wisdom and tough love approach. I watched your video on when a partner asks for time and space. So Richard, we did that one. It, it, it's out there now. Okay. And I get what you're saying, but what if the partner broke up with you because they've not gone through the process of getting over their ex? Is there any chance in the future for starting things up again, or does it have a lot to do with timing? Thanks for all your insights. V, if you're watching today, you were the rebound. Your partner was 
let's let's give them the benefit of a doubt. Let's say that your partner actually was trying to move forward, not just escape their pain, but really trying to move forward and met you and you were delightful. But the more they got involved with you, the more they opened their heart to you, they realized they had an inner conflict, that their heart was torn because what they were feeling for you, they really wanted to experience with their ex. Now you're asking me, is there hope for you in the future? Statistically, this is not a good odds. I, I'm trying to always be as positive. Um, here's the thing. They, here's what I do know. They have to go back and do what I call their due diligence. They have to go back and explore their ex. Good news for you, which seems to defy what I said, but I'll explain why. Good news. When people break up, they, they break up for reasons. They're very specific reasons. If we don't change those issues and they don't get corrected, even time away where you miss them, you know, there were some things that were great. You have sex again, you start hanging out. Normally within a week, a month maximum, you're broken up again because those issues were not solved and changed. This is why it works well when you have time apart to get back with a partner because you both changed. But if you think that somebody dated you briefly, V, like a month, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and they go back to their ex, within a month or two, they'll be done with their ex. It doesn't get worked out that quickly. Remember, they had all of their relationship to work this out before you. Now, what you want to know, will they come back to me? Maybe. But sometimes when they come back, that is a possibility, but sometimes when they come back, they just really do a massive overhaul, clean the house, take time off, know enough to stay off the dating market until they've sorted some things out for themselves, given themselves the luxury and through wisdom of having private time of not dating till they have centered, till that pendulum that has been swinging comes more like this, then they might want something completely different. Do not wait around. You didn't write that, but I bet that's what you're thinking. So V, I hope you're seeing this. And I hope that uh, Bamrig, I know you're watching, and Sherry, I hope you catch this too because now I'm answering your questions. So that is all about rebounds, right? Um, there are many, many, many different scenarios about being a rebound, finding rebounds. Are you the rebound? Are you rebounding? By the way, some people call these second marriages. I mean, there are people who meet at the end of one relationship winding down and they begin before they're fully done, but in their, in their schedule of love, that relationship has ended already. So therefore they are looking to something new and available for something new. They may not be fully out of their relationship. They may not be completely divorced. Listen, divorce takes a lot longer nowadays. My girlfriends are telling me how long it takes. I mean, it used to be done in like, you could get a divorce in nine months, get all that stuff done. Now it can sit in the dockets. Well, COVID didn't help. I mean, you can sit in the dockets forever. And um, so now I'm going to answer your questions. Real Now we got 45 minutes for me to just talk to all of you. So if you have any questions, put them in super chat. We will indeed find them and my mods will be here to help you. Uh, hi, hi, John Mayville. Hi to you. Let's see what else do we have here. Hi, Sizzy. Seems like warmed up milk to me. <laughs> I agree with Susan that if they come back, they won't be getting the same girl or guy. It just kind of seems to go that way. I urge all of you, if you want to see positive movement in your life, don't sit down and wait for somebody to realize how cool you are. Um, there's a guy, and I don't endorse many people. 
I, as a matter of fact, if you ask me who another female is that works in my industry, I, I don't really know because I don't pay attention. But I catch this guy, uh, Benjamin Daly. He's got these really cute little quick snippets on Instagram. Talks straight. Tells you straight in 20 seconds. Bottom line, he works only with women. I work with men and women. Straight and gay. But he'll say, like, if he doesn't call you, he's not interested. If he doesn't text you, he's not interested. Silence is an answer, you know, very, very direct. They, it, that's the tough love, you know? People have all sorts of, it, but it does, sometimes all of you are ready to run a lot faster than you need to because your ego is getting in the way. And I've worked, I think this week, almost exclusively with people who had their friends told them, bad situation, get out, bail now, but, there was one more piece of information they needed for resolution. They needed to give their partner an opportunity to know what was wrong. They needed to tell them what they would want instead and then see if there's any hope that this partner can do it. And only then would they have enough information to say, now that I've told you, and now I see you've either acted on this or you have ignored it. Now I can leave you in peace. Either our relationship gets back on track because you know what I want and need, or we're not going anywhere and you have just saved me a year of wondering what if, because I left it unresolved. And what happens is when we leave a relationship prematurely without having left no stone unturned, meaning you do the due diligence to figure out what's happening, you have to. This is why we're all so afraid. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm going to look weak. I'm going to look needy. No, you need information. You're not weak and needy. You're unresolved. Very different concept. Very different. If they don't answer you, send them a text with a yes or no. You know, click a button. You, you know, I get these for my physical therapy appointments. I have a fractured elbow, right? I don't know if you all remember this. I didn't wear the sling on camera. but. Um, you know, I have to send a Y or an N. I'm confirming or I'm not. You know, are you into this? Y for yes, N for no. Right? I mean, how simple is that? That's not weak or needy. That's like, I need an answer. Okay. I see that we have a super chat, 2898. Hi, Gerald Cooper. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My friend with benefits wanted to break things off because he thinks I'm pushy and aggressive. I promised him to work on my anxiety and insecurities. Then he suggested I work on my physical appearance or personality, and then we can start over. Help. Okay, so I have a couple of ideas about this. Now, all of you listening, I'm sure you're thinking, oh my God, that person is so abusive and so controlling. Why are you with somebody so critical? Okay, that is on one level true. On another level, I'm really curious, Gerald, why you attract somebody like this who is so critical, but does this person also motivate you to get on point and be a better version of yourself? We may not like what somebody's saying, but is any of that true? But then my question after that would be, are you always anxious and insecure or does this relationship trigger insecurity because it could be the person who's making you feel insecure. You know, so many people will tell me, oh, I'm really insecure and I, I know I'm just acting too weak and needy. And what they're asking for in their relationship is like human decency, courtesy, um, a response. We were supposed to get together this week. I can't wait to see you this week. And then they hear nothing from the person. Then seven days pass. They're like, what do I do? Well, you get your answer and your answer tells you if you move on. If they don't respond, that is your answer. But then you counter with an answer so that you close the door. You have to close the door on them. Even if they are doing it to you, you've got to say it to call it. I really, really prefer taking control and having you call it. Sorry it didn't work out. I liked you disappointed by this. I would have preferred that we stay in contact, but wish you well, you know, whatever. So Gerald, um, 
how's your physical appearance? Are you already the best you can be? I mean, this person's asking a lot. Are you getting a lot from them? If you're getting inspired, okay. It, at least this relationship is helpful. But I think underneath all of this, two of you have a kind of a interesting weave going on. You want to be accepted and this person wants to make you jump through hoops. So I would just to irritate this person, work on your physical appearance. I would do everything that they suggest and cool off on them. <laughs> Use the inspiration and dump the person. Anyway, that's, that's just what I'm thinking right now. And if any of you want to chime in, I'm sure he'd appreciate your help. Hi, Chitran. Thank you so much. Girlfriend started seeing a guy just before a breakup. Reason being I was unavailable for her due to my career related issues. I dumped her as she was being cold. Okay. So nobody's really wounded here. You were busy trying to build a life. She wanted more attention. She started growing cold because she didn't get what she wanted and needed. You honestly didn't prioritize her. Now, I'm not saying that she should come in front of your business or in front of your schoolwork or if you have a big project, but you also didn't try to appease her enough, I think. I don't know. Very hard to tell from four sentences. So maybe she wasn't that important to you. You know, there are people we like to be with, and it's convenient, and it's nice, and we've been with them, so we feel a certain amount of attachment. And then there are those people that we will do anything to maintain. It sounds like neither of you were that fully invested. Invested, yes, but not that fully. Doesn't sound like anybody lost anything significant. You let them go. She wants far more attention, and you're ambitious. Good for you. I think that's wonderful. Um, I think you're the best relationship expert, Susan. Thank you, Anto Erickson. Thank you. Okay. Gwyneth Sharps and B. Ray. Hi, Jillian, you lovely lady. Hi. Oh, B. Welcome back, my darling. Some shreddies. What are shreddies? Is that German for something? Are, are, are they breakfast cereal? What are shreddies? Grab some shreddies. Inform me, everyone. Um, if you sign up for the news, I quit it. You're so good. Oh my God. My God. Be yourself. Don't change yourself unless you want to. Okay. That's cool. If you change yourself for others, you're basically a slave. Unless what they're saying, they may be critical in saying it, but remember it bothers us because there's some part of us that has some resonance for it. Okay. If somebody is telling me, uh, that they like somebody really tall and I'm five, six and a half and they love, if I've got a partner that goes, Oh my God, look at her. She's so tall. Oh my God. They're so tall. Everything I'm not. And I can't change that. I can't get taller for you. Not going to happen. I'm also never going to have legs the size of my arm. Never, ever, ever going to happen unless I'm very sick and on my way out. Never going to happen. Not my build. So if you're asking me to do something that is against my genetic or my physical ability, yeah. But I've had uh, clients that urge their partner to stay in shape. Is it selfish? Yeah. They want to be attracted to their partner. But sometimes it's the partner who is also thankful going, God, I hated it when you kicked my butt to get into the gym, but I like the way I look. And now I can leave you. <laughs> I've got more options. <laughs> so, okay. So let's see what else. Oh, they're B's favorite cereal. You brought her after a supply from the UK. Do not know Shreddies. Does anybody else know Shreddies? Okay. Gerald Cooper says, I think I should work out more because that's probably what he expects of me. Well, Gerald, now the story changes. Work out because you're going to have more power in general, you know? Working out is, uh, 
it, you know, so when we see a really good looking man in shape in New York, most of the times we're like, oh, he's gay. No, no regular guys look like that. No straight guys look like that. But now more and more straight guys are looking like that. I mean, it's a thing. The, the, um, the old school of a businessman, you know, being 35 and looking 50, and that's the price he paid for killing himself to make money. Millennials have changed all that. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to the gym and we're going to get sleep and we're going to be healthy and we're going to do what we love. So, you know, if, if it makes you happy, but if your partner, Gerald, or anybody else here, keeps holding a bar for you to jump over, and then every time you jump, then they make it a little bit higher, that is no longer somebody who challenges you or encourages you to be the best you. That is now somebody who tortures you, and you should run away. Run away. See how one sentence can change the entire analysis? Okay. I was dating someone after three months recovering from a very hard breakup and we were having a deep conversation. But after the third date, he said he was scared and wanted to take things slow. Okay. Was he scared for himself or scared that you would bail on him? Chris. No, not on this one. Uh, not going to address that. Okay. Um, let's see. I went on a mad hunt for the shreddies round loads of different shops as there was a shortage and managed to get the last box for B-Ray. <laughs> okay, there are British breakfast cereal, which Gwyneth bought for me, and they're my favorite because they're not available in Germany. I've loved the shreddies ever since I was a teenager. Zen Maiden is here. Okay, this is really wonderful, everyone. I want Zen Maiden one. I got more options. This is so funny. Okay, many of you have had great results and you never worked with me. You just come on this show and you hear something and then it goes, Zen Maiden was able to extricate herself from a partner who didn't really honor her the way he could have, is happily married. And that was my understanding as of at least a couple of years ago, because I remember doing videos about that and she's on here. And so I really do thank those of you who are already happily in your partnership and you've gone through all this to come back in here and participate and um you know keep us all going and it makes us very happy and that's very generous of you thank you so much ah uh, oh boy nozifo okay says what if i'm starting to find my rebound amazing mm. within a week of meeting could it be infatuation or there's hope. I'm not fully aware. I still love my ex, but don't want to let it hold me back. I think that's brilliant. I don't know the factors that have created your ex and made your ex an ex. But if you've found somebody that sees you differently, where you can be the things you could not be in your last relationship, you, I think, owe it to yourself to test it out. You are now single and free. Why would you be waiting around to see if your ex has a change of heart? I would move forward. I think this is wonderful. And again, today's show is on rebounds. I'd like to stay on that topic, but I'm grabbing your questions as I see them. And if you have a question for me, you can reach me in Super Chat. And let's see. Uh, <laughs> you all having conversations about breakfast cereal. Uh, Louisa. Rebound was with an amazing guy, told him I needed to heal first before we can continue because of unhealed wounds are resurfacing. Did I do the right thing? Because right now it felt wrong to let him go. Sometimes, you know, this is a judgment call on your part. I am not working with you. If we were working together on the phone, I would have that answer for you. Okay. You have to understand, I give you the best information at first glance why I like individual sessions and nobody else wants to do them in my profession is that I can really go deep and I can get the answer for you. Maybe not even the one either one of us expected because I'm going to hear it underneath all the questions that are asked. If you, if you feel that this new relationship is triggering things from your past, 
that you sense are definitely going to be problematic that you're going to drag into it, then you're doing the right thing. But if you have found somebody that you really like, I would give them the option before you break up with them. I really like you. And I know I have this issue. I would like to explore this. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt myself. Would you be willing to explore the possibility of us doing something together, just getting to know each other, and I reveal to you what I'm going through? Because sometimes it is your partner that heals you. I mean, relationships are ultimately for us to heal ourselves, but we do it in union with a partner. And if any of you have read the old Harville Hendricks stuff from the 90s, uh, he was a minister and couples would come to him at the point of breakup, you know, like we're, di we're divorcing. And it was at the point of them divorcing that he saw all the possibilities of an entirely new design, right? But this was radical thinking. So in a, an evolved relationship, our partner is our uh, there, there are, they're literally our partner and you can't expect that two people are going to come into a relationship without having had some baggage. If you're anything over the age of 20, you're carrying something. Even if you're 18, you could have family issues. Okay. So whether you know it or not, we're all carrying baggage into our relationships and these wounds and these traumas that we're trying to work out Yes, there's a time and a place where it is the smartest thing for us to be away from a relationship because we don't trust ourselves. We might be fearful and jump into them or we're anxious and we're needy and we're insecure and we would be entering from all the wrong reasons and not with our strength. But if we've met somebody and we still have remnant issues, the best thing to do is be absolutely honest and say, I'm still working through these things. It's your call. I'd like to continue seeing you. I'm just telling you, I'm not. But, you, but see, we're all that way. You think any human being you meet out there, somebody had written me a long time ago and asked me, what does locked and loaded look like? like I call it locked and loaded. Somebody who's really ready for a relationship. They're just ready. They're eager. And they are eager to take on your stuff too because they understand that's part of a relationship. Two people, you know, you don't come in two fully healed people. I mean, who's healed? We do the best job we can in this life. We have our issues, right? So uh, let's see. Maria, I left my adored partner because he didn't want to go further of being together only weekends. I'm 41, he is 54, did I do the right thing? I want more from him. Wait, I left my adored partner because he didn't want to go further than, I think you mean than being together only on the weekends. So you weren't getting what you wanted. And you told him, I need more than the weekends. So let's think this through. You've got a partner and you've got one request. I need more of you than a weekend. And your partner does nothing to satisfy that. Then you did the right job to leave. How much effort does it take? One night, one night. I understand, I mean, I don't know what kind of work people do that they have to like do like this. But at 54, <laughs> your partner's winding down. Okay, very few people start and accelerate and run harder than they've ever run in the senior years. I'm the odd one, okay? Like I'm running before I fall. <laughs> That's it. So at 54, I, I think he's got some free time. I think you did the right thing. I do. Doesn't have time for you just because you adored him. And by the way, I have this wonderful client in France. Oh, my God, he's so wonderful. And he's talking about all the men that he's loved and each time he's loved. And he said, oh, this is the biggest. I said, what about the last one? Oh, that was big too. And I said, well, which is the biggest? He said, this one now. And I said, but before this one, the other one was the biggest. 
So what we came to is that the ability to love is his ability within himself to experience love. And that when he finds somebody lucky enough to walk in front of him that captures his eye and he decides and chooses to love them and dumps his love on them, they become the biggest love he's ever had, right? So th this is a very long way, Maria, of saying, if you adored this man, you have the capability to adore another who can give you a Wednesday night. <laughs> Come on, give me Tuesday night. Okay, Tuesday, Tuesday is not such a busy night. Give me Wednesday. What's the deal with that? Uh, let's see. Okay, some of you are talking to each other. You gave me so much to think about, Susan. Thank you so much for answering. You're amazing. You're welcome, Louisa. Hi, Samantha. Heart, heart, heart. I don't want a rebound relationship. Can I start dating with intention, even though I still have feelings for my ex? Yes, Diana, how long have you been broken up? And are you certain that you are not getting what you want from your partner? Because if you have played it out and they didn't give you the relationship you wanted, and you know you did everything on your end. You told them what you wanted. You told them what you needed. You gave them some time. You told them again. You showed them. You told them why you want what you want, and they still don't fix it. Then you are missing them, but I don't think you're still attached to them. You, know, you have to realize our partners become woven into our lives. I mean, we've got a buddy every weekend. We know what we're doing. We know who we spend holidays with. We know who we're going to call when we have a piece of news. It's the automatic go-to. So most of the time, when a relationship ends, even if it was new, it wasn't great, we were like 75% sick of them. Even so, what happens is we'll feel a void. We will miss and then our mind will go back to the blissful times in the very beginning when we were in the honeymoon stage. And normally what we miss in an ex, we miss the good memories, the good stuff in the beginning when everybody was motivated to work the hardest and be their best version of themselves. And then you start to remember why you broke up with them. <laughs> 125, Louisa, my way of showing you love and support. Mwah! Thank you, Louisa. Oh my God, you wonderful woman. That is so sweet of you. Oh my God. And Jarrett, yes, you are welcome. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You people are so wonderful. Thank you. Um, let's see. Now you're all talking to each other. I think we've found there's nothing I've missed anything here. Let's see. We do love our Jillian. She is so kind. Patricia, 20 euros. Hello, my dear. Let's see what we can do for you. I was my crush's rebound. Wow. He told me he really liked me, but he wanted to take his time and date other people and maybe be together at some point later. <laughs> Boy, that's about as nebulous as you can get soon after he found someone else, but he still was contacting me at times. That is selfish. And Patricia, I'm so sorry. So here, let's deconstruct a crush. I hope you're not mortally wounded by this because it sounds like it was fairly light your ego might be bruised and your hopes are dashed. And it's exhausting to put on your party dress and start all over again. But crushes are crushes because we don't know that much about them. And when we finally get, get a little nibble or a taste, it's very exciting. And again, like any new relationship in the honeymoon phase, when it's ripped from our teeth, when we've just oh, taken the first bite, it's the most painful. But this person was in a, a kind of a feeding frenzy looking for new material and how cool that your crush was crushing on you. That's pretty cool. But ultimately they went another direction, turn, pivot, move and shake your little hind and like, yeah, my crush liked me too. Hmm. Hmm. I had a crush. I actually got my crush to be interested, but I don't think my crush is the ultimate. Okay, sorry, you guys have new sneakers on. They're so comfy, but they make these little noises. Okay, so I hope, Patricia, you keep walking, okay? And he's 
do not let him keep contacting you. And I want you to answer him directly. Say, hey, you know what? You don't need to contact me. You know, you've made your choice to move on. I don't see any reason for us to speak anymore. Best wishes. Have fun. It, it, because it's unfair. What he's doing is keeping you on simmer. We don't allow that, okay? Um, I think there's a lot of clarity in wanting a good relationship with time spent together. It's sad that not everyone we meet shares the notion. Sissy, with you on that. TK, 35. Thank you so much. Susan, how do I move on knowing that they never cared and moved on like I meant nothing? How does one get over the hurt? Let me see. How many people are on this channel right now? <laughs> Several hundred. <laughs> We've all got our stories. We've all got our stories. This is why I say lovers are whimsical. And in the moment, they did care. Or they said enough to confuse you and fool you and make you think that they cared. But you run deeper than your partner. And I'm sorry for that. And I'm sorry that they hurt you. But you are going to go on. It, let me tell you, it's not the last hurt, but it's certainly not the last smile, and it's not the last love. This is life. We lose some, we win some, okay? And if you, it's bad enough that you're hurt once, but you've got to get up, dust yourself off, and move forward. Do not let your ego bury you in, why didn't they want me? Next bus. Next, next, next. Why are you making it like they didn't want you? They failed your design. Okay, if we want to go back to what Sissy said, let's level up. Um, there's one way to look at it. They, they dumped you. They didn't think you were enough. Another way to look at it is, wow, they bailed. Just shows me more of what I want. They didn't meet the grade of being with me. Okay, so do some positive thinking for yourself. Thank you so much for this. I want to make sure that I didn't miss anyone. Okay, Louisa, I saw this. I know that we have some more super chats coming in here. Uh, Blissful Life, 179. Thank you, my darling. Love you, Susan. Colin, thank you. Um, let's see. So Blissful Life, we have something. Oh, this you're just sending me love? If you have a question, I'll, I'll read it. Gwyneth will find it. Um, let's see. Blissful Love. Oh, here we are. It's, she says, um, it's getting tough to find genuine guys who want to have commitment. Is it asking too much? No, no. And you know what's funny? My gay clients, can I tell you how many letters and emails and, and sessions I've done over gay men asking me, is monogamy possible? Is commitment possible? We, we discovered something pretty cool during COVID. People were making commitments, and I think everybody's forgotten about that. What you're feeling is part of the undertow of the last two decades of hooking up. When we separated uh, a construct of some kind of formal label and relationship from the sexual act, we, we were way past marriage, way past living together, but people could date and have sex and, and at least had some kind of stability. Then we started doing it like you get a cup of coffee. Oh, I'm going to hook up with you, oh, whatever, whatever. Now, this is, this is kind of abnormal for people. It is normal to want to experiment, touch, taste, and feel, but to do it for decades is not normal. This is why we have such a whiplash now and so much confusion. So at some point the person will want to filter after they have enough data. If you are finding people repeatedly who are not ready to make a commitment, you are either looking at an age group or a certain group of people that have not yet found sufficient reason to filter and want to start to qualify who they're with. You know, any young guy who's racking up numbers, straight guy, gay guy, will tell you, in the beginning, it's just testing, you know, like, wow, can I get these people? And then once you do, now you start to look for quality. So it does happen. It does. And remember, commitment is a choice. And you start filtering from the beginning. I want you to look for the red flags. I want you to look for the good things. But I want you to also remember 
that people put on their best behavior in the beginning, but watch how they treat everybody, everything from the server to how they talk about their coworkers. Get a sense of the quality of human being that you're with, okay? Okay, Blissful Life, thank you so much. Natasha, okay, we got a lot here. Hang on. 899, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for everything you do, Susan. I've been following you for years. Natasha, oh my goodness, especially appreciate the new balanced and grounded twin flame material you've been burning out lately or bringing out lately. Thank you. I, I wrote in my commentary, um, twin flame metaphysical, all these things. I want everybody to remember any person, human being that opens their mouth on any platform that is talking about spirituality, please, please, please remember it is their experience and their opinion. Okay. We are talking about things that are undefinable. We can't define these things. We can only relay our personal experience and give you our assessment of what we think, given what we understand on this platform right now and this level that we're on, whatever realm we're on, whatever understanding we have at the time. So take everything that people say spiritually with a grain of salt, Look for your experiences. Listen to what your heart says is true. I had my experience long before we had information about it. I was always reluctant to talk about it. One is if I told you guys half of the stuff I've gone through spiritually, I would sound like a crazy person. But when things happen to you and you're right in the middle of it, looking at it going, oh, this is weird. This is definitely, I've got no words for this one. You know, you're in the middle of something different, right? So thank you so much for that. I do appreciate that. And I was just looking at um, an old graphic that we had from November 2019. I had written, a, I'd had a graphic made for me that said, thank you everyone for 15 million views. This is number 21. We're at 30 million views. <laughs> I started this in 2016. I got the station, but wow. So I remember a kid writing me, he said, Susan, I remember when you had 128 <laughs> subscribers. I was number 128. So thank you all for being here. And thank you for contributing and, and giving me ideas of what you want to talk about. Natasha, my darling, thank you so much for that. Um, let's see. Okay. Thomas, Sally. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Jillian, we adore you. 999. Just love your advice, Susan. Thank you, Gwyneth Sharps and B Ray, for all you do. Jillian is one of the kindest people. I mean, we are getting to know her here. She's here. Oh my goodness. She's just lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you, all of you. My troopers, like, I know you have better things to do, right? This is like I could at two o'clock in the afternoon in New York. I don't have time to sit down, but you know, it's good as you can bring your phone with you. Maybe you're in the gym or whatever you're doing cardio. Gerald Cooper, 1498. A few days ago, my friend with benefit refused to sleep with me. Now I know it's because my pushy behaviors made him feel uncomfortable. I hit the gym and go no contact for a while to make him miss me. Good move. Yeah. Except if you have to keep somebody by always running away from them to re-engage, you're stuck in a game. So this is an ego game. This is pursuit. This isn't like a, this isn't the relationship I'd want you to have. Distance activates somebody's interest in us. But if the requirement to be interesting is to keep walking away, tell me the sex is the best you've ever had because I don't know why you're paying this price. I get it if you say it's the best you've ever had, okay? Then keep going to the gym. But don't put this person on a pedestal as being anything other than that. I would love to see you find somebody that thinks you're absolutely amazing just because you are. That's it. And go to the gym because you want to. And be fantastic because you want to. But... We just can't let them rule our lives. If anything you're doing is a reaction, they've got you on a game board. They do. If you're reacting, trying to do a move to make them do a move, you're not, in, you're not living your life. You're living their game board. They put you in the middle of a game. 
You don't win unless you walk off the board. You're like, I'm not doing this. I'm not. Then you think he, you think he's chasing you when you go to the gym and stay away? Oh, he'll really chase you when you're like, I'm not doing this. No, no, no. I'm not doing this at all. I don't want a friend with benefits. I want a boyfriend. I want somebody committed to me. I don't even like this. Go play with somebody else. That would be different. Just saying. That's an option. Who knows? Ah, let's see. It wasn't so easy to say next. Feelings are feelings. We want to know why if there wasn't closure that we may need. Terry, everybody has to make closure for themselves in order to move on. If you haven't looked at it yet, even if you're not in a breakup, get breakup triage. If you've got Audible, it's free. It's like $2. Yes, guys, it's 33 minutes of me talking. Number one, rule number one, you've got to put some kind of context. What happened? Bad timing, person wasn't ready, they weren't over their ex, they're not the right one for me. You gotta give it your own answer. I mean, just anything. They didn't communicate. That's your closure. And the, you should add the sentence, and that doesn't work for me either. We can't always be the victim, you know? So I hope that helps. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Sudart. I can't even begin to see so many consonants in here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let me see. Here we go. $10. Thank you, my dear. Hello, Susan. This is Amy. First time here. Amy, welcome. You're in a good crowd. I just want to say thank you for all your work. It helps me so much. Uh, during the time my ex dumped me out of nowhere. Wow. Now, now I met a good guy following your advice. <laughs> Listen, I, honey, thank you so much for sharing this. You've already got your happy ending here. You didn't need to say this. And I so appreciate it because for everybody listening here, especially when you think it can't happen, yes, we've been looking at a dirty mirror. I had somebody that was like this. Oh, I had a couple more because I dated players on purpose. You can lose yourself. Try to look into their eyes to find your reflection and they don't see you. They just don't. So what's the truth? If they don't see you, you don't exist. If they don't see your worth, you have no worth. The heck is that? That's not, that's not the right equation. A tree falls in the forest. There is a sound. Definitely. I'm not there to hear it, but it, there's a sound. And I have worth, whether this person sees it or not. But it's better to play with people who see your worth. Good friends, people who support you, people who like you. We get stuck in wanting to win, and you don't want to admit it. So much of it is ego. So much of it is ego. And it drives our desire because we can't have them. It does. And it makes us want to win them even more. But the real win is to get off that <laughs> vicious merry-go-round and get yourself free. You know, then to find somebody wonderful. Thank you. I love this. I love this. I love this. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Gwen Sharps. Uh, oh, you're so sweet, Gwen. Thank you. That. Sidara, thank you so much. I, I hope I said something close to your name. I really appreciate it. Terry M, great advice, Susan, to look at those things when dating. Okay, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? I'm almost done, everyone. Jillian, we adore you. Thank you so much. Susan helped me for free once, and I never forgot her gesture of love from Portugal. Hi there. Hi. Well, I do. It just depends. Sometimes I answer your emails right off the, the bat. If I have time, it's mostly now a question of time. Thank you so much for this. Thomas, hello, my dear. How are you? 10,000. <laughs> hey, Susan, doing great. Thanks. Engage now. Ah! Engage now. Imagine that. Speaking of rebounds, what I think. Oh, my God. Well, wait. Nice that you're going to comment, but let me just. 
<laughs> oh gosh, this is so great. Uh, that's I, I just have to stop right there. I'm so happy for you. This is one of my clients I've worked with in the past. I'm so happy to see you come back. Again, you know, those of you that have success stories, you don't have to come back and join us, but it's so great that you do because people learn, people hear that this stuff works, that you can have it. Okay, so now, thank you, thank you, Thomas. Okay, so um, speaking of rebounds, what what I think. When one is emotionally not ready due to an old, previous, unprocessed relationship, but they are with you, with their body, their mind is with someone else. True, true. That's very true. And you know, we also, Thomas, I'm so excited, but we also have to remember, please, those of you who have taken it very, very personally, I really, I'm having a hard time. There are sick people out there. There are sick, twisted, sadistic people, but they are fewer than we, you know, we are the normal lot of us. We are meeting people that are trying to cope with their own issues. And maybe they are giving you their body because they're hoping their heart catches up and their mind catches up. And they don't want to be caught loving their ex. They don't want to be there. And they're trying with you because they trust you and you look like a good person and they're hoping that they can sort this out and use you, use, you know, and I mean, use the springboard of this relationship to move them out of their pain and, and try to have something with you in the meantime. So I want everybody to remember People don't just get out of a relationship and look at somebody at a club and think, oh, wow, that's going to be my rebound. I'm just going to act out on them and then leave them because I feel like it. We're always trying to move from the fire to something more manageable, right? So this is wonderful. And Thomas, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Everyone, we've come to the end of our hour pretty soon. My little girl's going to come back, little Nika. Um, I thank all of you. Who, what do you want to hear next? What, tell me what you want to hear next. Um, I want to do something uh, that you want to hear about. Uh, personality disorders, honey, I'm not a therapist. I'm not comfortable going into that. I'm just going to stay in my lane. I know what I know the best. And I prefer to give you advice that I think I can really count on. Okay. So what else do you want to hear about? Um, no, borderline personality disorder, not my, not my thing. I would not go to a dating coach for that. I would definitely uh, go on to somebody's site who is, you know, a therapist, a licensed therapist, and hear theirs. Um, thank you. That boring dude, by the way, great channel, Miss Winter. <laughs> Love from California. So what do you want to hear about? Can you talk about friend with benefits, Gerald? Okay, I'm going to take some notes here. Hang on. Okay, friends with benefits. What else do we want to talk about? Uh, dating and the COVID, how and when to kiss, sex and everything. Oh, oh, how to forgive yourself. Oh, I've never done that. The one who's asked for friend with benefits, put it in because it's in. We've already done a live show on this about a year ago, but it's it's chock full of nuts. How to forgive yourself. For what? Help me. How to forgive yourself for what? Loving them? How to forgive yourself. Please, let's see. Where did I find this? This is a great topic. I love this. Rob, okay, wait. I got one more. Okay, wait. How to forgive yourself. Where did I find this? Somebody just wrote that. Oh, I loved it. Okay, um, I'm going to jump now. Let's see. Oh, long distance relationships. Okay. LDR. Um, dating with kids. Okay. My girlfriend broke up with me after we got together after one month with a guy, but before said she won't ever be with him. I'm afraid she cheated on me with him. You are in the middle of a breakup and you have to take this to be what it is. Okay. When people just switch horses right away, you're one month and she's already with somebody else. Okay. So I suggest you keep moving. Ron, I thank you for this. Um, uh, Rob, I'm sorry. I thank you for this. I would not put faith in that either. 
And let's see what we have right here. Jillian N., how about keeping the spark and freshness in the relationship after you've been together for your, a while? Fantastic. You know what? Okay, um, spark and relationship. And relationship. Yep, Long because a lot of people want to know what happens in the relationship. How do we keep it? Okay, Jillian, I need to make some announcements for you all. I will read everything here. How to manage money. Oh, I love that. I have a presentation called Love, Money, and Power. It is fabulous. And money. You are all giving me ideas. Now, next, this, this Saturday, which is November 6th, I'll be live on Instagram at 3 p.m. Eastern. Ask me anything. So if any of you are on Instagram, look, I'll put it in the community. Uh, the community section of YouTube on my channel here, you'll see the notifications starting tomorrow. You'll go to Narc Abuse TV. Or if you follow me on Instagram, Susan e. Winter, you'll see me live. You just go there and it's two hours. I'm answering all of your questions, okay? Then I have to tell you, I have a really, really, really big event on every social media platform happening on November 13th at 3 p.m. It's going to be on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everything. So please look at the community page because that's going to be an ask me anything. And I'm going to have moderators that are going to catch all the questions and it's going to be very interactive. So that's free. All of this is free. It's going to be wonderful. I want to remind all of you to sign up for my newsletter at susanwinter.net on the main page. That way you can know where I'm traveling and how I can see you. And I also want you to take a look at the consultations. I'm doing more in-person consultations and they're wonderful. We do a deep dive and I take you to lunch or breakfast. And I know there were a couple more uh, questions here. Um, let's see, I think I th there was one more thing. There's Julian, let's see, Thomas, I got you. Were there any other super chats that I missed? I think that's it. Uh, let's see. Okay, your heart says yes and your head says no. How do you manage a relationship if one person is going through long-term divorce, manage money? These are very, very good concepts. Forgive yourself. I wanna know, keep writing me, whoever wrote Forgive Yourself, Forgive yourself for what? Why do we have to forgive ourselves for? That was a really, really good topic. Forgive yourself for what? So keep writing, okay, for loving them. Oh my God, I love that. I hate myself for loving you. Remember Joan Jett? That is so good. Oh my, I think I did a video on that. Seattle gal, I think I did a video on that how to forgive yourself for loving them. I know I did. Some of these topics that you all want, go to my YouTube page and where there's the little magnifying glass, type in the keywords. I think I did that already because that's a good topic. So susanwinter.net, don't forget you can work with me individually, sign up for my newsletter so I'll tell you what countries I'm in, how we can meet each other and um, then you'll also know the special events that I have going on. This Saturday, I'll be at Narc Abuse TV. That'll be the Instagram. Uh, you'll see it in the community page. Come to the community page to check in, but sign up definitely for the newsletter. Thank you, everyone. Great, great. Thomas, I'm so excited for you. This is great. Oh, B, thank you. Gwyneth, thank you so much. Everyone, adore you. Thank you for your suggestions. When we close out, I'm going to read these. I'm going to list them. Thank you, and I'm happy that all of you participated here. You're a wonderful and lovely audience. I wish that you all, I got an assignment for you, all those that are still listening. When you get off here, if you can, I want you to go to the mirror, and I want you to look at yourself, and I want you to say, you know what? I'm okay. I'm more than okay. I'm actually pretty fantastic. All right, you may have to do that a couple times. And anytime that you're looking at somebody and you don't feel that way back about yourself, instead of chasing them to wonder how you can make them accept you, approve of you, or like you, you have to ask yourself, why do I even want to look in that dirty mirror? Remember, people can only see you if they can feel for themselves, right? Somebody who's very critical of you, they have, they have enormous self-criticism. So everybody, I think you're wonderful. 
and everybody here thinks you're wonderful. Look at this, right? So we never wait on a maybe, and we are not here to prove our worth to some dirty mirror. Go for the clean mirrors. Okay, everyone? Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Great, great, great topics. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye now. See you later. And catch me on Saturday, okay, 3 p.m. Eastern. Look for me on Instagram. Bye, everyone.